Hey guys, I'm Steve Sanders. I am uh, the program leader for Cummins Repower. You might remember me from last year's SEMA where we introduced the Cummins R2.8 turbo diesel. We are now officially on sale and shipping engines, so very exciting stuff. Uh, we did a walk around of the engine last year of what we were planning to bring to market, and now you can actually see what we did bring to market and what we're shipping to customers now. So. Here we have one of the uh, first R2.8 turbo diesel engines. Like we said last year on the walk around, one of the things that we felt was important was to show an entire front end accessory drive that comes with the engine. They're not add-on parts. So we have a 120 amp alternator, we have a ZF power steering pump, we have a blank for an air conditioner compressor here, and we have a vacuum pump. So those of you guys that are doing um, gas to diesel swaps, you don't have to do a full hydro boost conversion uh, if you don't want to. You can run your HVAC uh, that runs off a vacuum right off of this cam driven vacuum pump. Uh, another thing included in the kit is an air straightener for our MAF sensor. So uh, our MAF was very important to control kind of EGR flow and really regulate that. So we wanted to make sure that there's no guesswork around that. Put your air filter right on the end of it and then however else you want to do your intake connection. Um, when you open your box, you'll have an engine mounted DOC, a diesel oxidation catalyst is a passive flow through device, so it's not a DPF. There's no performance gain to get rid of it. Uh, it cleans up that kind of cold start hydrocarbon smell. So uh, if you can't fit it here, there is a little wiggle room to move it downstream, uh, depending on your packaging requirements. Uh, in terms of like your heater hose connections, we wrapped one of the hard lines all the way back uh, to the back of the engine, and we left uh, a nice little kind of cable stay uh, on that hard line. So really trying to think of the things we learned from the beta and alpha installs and include those uh, in the engine program. Then the ECM is connected to this plug here. You've got a nice long lead that you can swing the ECM to uh, driver's side or passenger side, wherever you want to put it. And then there's another plug on the ECM, which we'll talk about here in a minute when we go over the, the wiring harness components. Uh, and then the other half of our harness plugs into that. So, as you recall from last year, this engine is around 503 pounds. It's ready to adapt to any aftermarket adapter. Right now on the market, we have uh, Jeep adapters for anything all the way up to NAG1. Uh, all the way as old as any of the 4 liter or 4.2 liter transmission options. So. Uh, AW4s, AX15s, NV3550s. Uh, there's also uh, GM adapters out there for GM automatic and manual adapters. Uh, and there's even a ZF 8-speed adapter, which is pretty exciting uh, to see the 8-speed independently controlled. Uh, it's a really great transmission behind this, so it'll be fun to see who takes that on. Uh, we've shown this thing in Jeeps quite a bit, but it's not just for Jeeps. For anything under 4,000 pounds right now, uh, we'll be releasing some other 2.8s and other calibrations for those higher weighted uh, vehicles where the calibration is geared toward performance for heavier vehicles. This is an FJ79 with an FJ80 frame. It's one of our beta customers, so it's a brand new engine under the hood. It's unlike any kind of Toyota I've ever seen. So I, I'm really excited to see this nice Cummins red truck. Uh, I'm a Jeep guy personally, but I wanted to make sure the world knew that uh, we have other installations, not just Jeeps. So uh, Jeremiah Prophet at Prophet Cruisers did a great job with this. Uh, it's got an SM4 turbo with an transmission. It's got a major overdrive coming in. Yeah, it's a little bit Chevy transfer case. So really a unique driveline stack behind our engine. We sent to the engine. We didn't really send them any tech support or anything. We sent them the kit and they dropped it in and they fired it up without any help from us and then we went out to kind of lay eyes on their install and uh, and go from there and from there it did all of UA no problems uh, so we were really excited about this one. In addition to the engine when you unbox that crate you've got all this other stuff with you so you'll have uh, your ECM like I said this is the second plug of the ECM uh, that goes to what we would call your vehicle side harness uh, or your J2 harness. With that, you see all these leads, including a nice bulkhead connector, which is a nice, I think, 27-pin Deutsch connector. So you don't have to snake a bunch of wires through the firewall. You knock out a two-inch hole, you can unscrew that and, and plug it in. So this is under your engine hood. You have your nice big uh, wire leads to your battery. So you have a mega fuse here, ground and positive. You have grid heater wiring and a grid heater solenoid. So we control that grid heater. We provide the wiring to the grid heater on the engine. 
And then you have uh, some extra stuff here. So if you want to pick up like a cam position signal off of uh, your factory wiring harness, if you want us to broadcast to that, we have that there. Uh, we have electric fan controls. So if you uh, provide your e-fan and a relay, we control it. So the engine knows when it needs to be on and off. Um, so we take all that logic and we do it through our computer. So then on this side of the firewall, the nice cozy interior side of the firewall, you've got a nice OBD plug here, so you can either put it beside yours, or if you didn't have one, put it where you'd normally have it. You can plug in your scan tool from AutoZone or wherever else, and it will read fault codes. But you don't have to do that because we provide a J1939 CAN display. This is a Murphy PV25. It's got a check engine light. It's got a stop engine light. And then all your basic engine vitals from uh, Tim, uh, your oil pressure, RPM, engine percentage load, so what load you are at each RPM uh, on the torque curb. So that's all plug and play for us. And then you've got this nice little bundle of wires. The main one here that you got to worry about is the pink one. This is your key switch signal. So make sure you have 12 volts going to that when you're ready to start your engine, and then take 12 volts away when you want your engine to stop. When you're wiring your key switch signal, make sure that you actually have 12 volts at cranking. We've seen some people that don't realize they're losing their 12 volt signal during the cranking position on the key switch. Uh, these other ones are the wire dummy lights. So although you have this, maybe you don't want that on display or maybe you don't want to use that at all. So maybe you want to wire a, a warning lamp or a stop engine lamp separately. Uh, also, you have a tack driver here if you want to run some other type of tack. But the nice thing if you don't know about diesel and J1939 can language is there's a whole bunch of other gauges out there on the market. There are whole instrument clusters that run on J1939. And so you can kind of plug and play with those, find out what other J1939 options will work for you if you don't like that. Or you can upgrade to other Murphy, uh, bigger, more elaborate displays. Uh, we have a, a Williams control pedal here. This is, I think, a seven pound throttle pedal in terms of seven pounds and resistance on it. You can unbolt this bracket if that doesn't work for you and you can kind of make your own. It just so happens for you Jeep guys that if you punch one extra hole in this bracket and you use the top hole, it goes to any of the TJ firewalls and locates right where it needs to be. So that's pretty handy. Um, so really everything you need except for the cooling package, battery, and diesel fuel. And you can have a running crate engine. When you want to pick your transmission, go to one of your transmission adapter companies. Um, be smart about your motor mount adapters. Uh, don't do a hack job, angle iron mount. This is a four-cylinder engine, so uh, getting some uh, good engineering work uh, on your motor mounts is, is good. So uh, find a trusted SEMA member that's done engine side mounts and isolators, and then make your frame mounts to those if you don't have frame mounts available uh, off the shelf, and you won't be disappointed with the, uh, the NVH, the noise vibration, the harshness of this at all. So fuel system on this, um, electronically controlled high pressure common rail. So what do you need to do to your vehicle? Uh, not much. So you don't need any inline pump or any lift pump. One example of how you can do your fuel system is a fuel cell. So this is an extreme off-road vehicle and there's no place for an OEM tank on it. I think the original tank on this one would have been like a 12 gallon tank under the seat. Uh, but wanting to go long distances, they opted for a 22 gallon uh, fuel cell on this. You'll see that you have one pickup tube and you have one return line. And that's what you need for this. So your return line goes to the bottom of the tank. Your uh, pickup tube goes within an inch of the bottom of the tank. You want to try to centralize that in your tank if you're doing a fuel cell so that you avoid you know, starving the pump uh, at angles. But other than that, you have a vented fuel tank. Um, you have one line that goes all the way up with no fuel pump in line. You don't need to order an aftermarket fuel pump. And you go straight to our high pressure uh, common rail Bosch pump, which has a lift pump integrated into it. We provide the quick disconnect fittings for that, for both the supply and return line. So you just run a 5 16th fuel line up to it, and you can run a 5 16th fuel line back to the tank. So for more information on that, we have some diagrams and illustrations in that installation guide at coming3power.com. So download that and check it out.
says, it says Toyota. Yeah. You say Toyota. That's what's been before geared towards automobile. With that, if there are any other questions about uh, the engine, or if you're thinking about buying the engine, you can go to CumminsRepower.com. We have the installation guide as a PDF available in there, so you can review that. If you have questions still about that, you can call 1-800-CUMMINS uh, or email to contact us on the Cummins Care Line. Um, once you have ordered an engine, if you do order one, you can email r 218 at Cummins.com, and they'll help you track your order, make other arrangements if you need to change your shipping address after the fact or you want to know where it is. Uh, usually your engine ships within like two or three days of order. So excited to actually be able to say that now. <laughs> uh, also on the website, we have a gear ratio calculator. So as you're thinking about planning your build, uh, we've got our torque curve and um, uh, horsepower curve on that uh, gear ratio calculator. And you can see a tack and a speedometer. And then you can type in either your planned vehicle, gear ratios, axles, transmission, etc., or what you currently have, and you can kind of see where you land. So, do I need to re-gear? Do I need to look at different tire sizes? Or am I just fine? I'd be happy with it if I just do the engine swap. Um, the last thing on the website uh, that I'd like you to do is take the survey. So, we posted a new survey up there. We got to where we are now because of the old survey we had. We ran a survey for two years and we listened that people were worried about wiring houses. They were worried about how to find fun and accessories. So we just made it all one part number and gave it to you guys. We want to do that with the next engine or improvements on this engine. So those of you who have already bought an engine and are already working with it, go take the survey. Tell us what you do or don't like about it. Those of you who don't think this is for you, tell us why. Tell us if you want an R50 or an R67, if you have a bigger truck or uh, you want a higher performance application. Uh, we only do things that our customers want for Cummins Repower. We don't want to do things that you don't want. So talk to us.